A well-timed application of OC spray can make an armed robber regret his life decisions. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us out of Russia. Many thanks to Magtech Ammunition for sponsoring today's video. It's the only ammunition that goes through my pistols or rifles and is the best stuff on the range. You can see the clerk here has his hand in his pocket. You're gonna find out why in a minute as there is a robber with a hammer on the other side of the door you can't see. As he comes near the clerk, pepper sprays him. A pretty good one there, gonna get him in the face a second time. Then get behind this door where the guy cannot get to him with that hammer. And you can see the OC is getting to him at that point. So he's really starting to fight that with uh, his other hand and go, oh no, what's going on? And you can see that it has pretty well disoriented him and taken him out of the fight. He's trying to use his hands here to kind of figure out, I think, where the cash box is so that he can still rob this joint. However, what's about to happen is you're gonna see the clerk come back out again and go, oh, okay, wait a minute. Let's see if I can grab the guy's hammer, which he's gonna you know, kick him a couple times, punch him a few, and actually I think get hit with the hammer there. Dude's gonna hit the other stuff with a hammer. Now you can see the customer in the jacket there is gonna go and get a chair and do his best WWE impression, smash the guy in the head with the chair a couple times. You can see the bad guy lost the hammer in that second hit and now it is on. It is an absolute cage match at this point as the clerk originally that was there is gonna come back out as well. Shut off uh, on the left side there. If you're not familiar in Russia, they have these you know beers on tap that you can get growlers full of. And so now this guy's not gone all the way to the ground, but he doesn't have his hammer in his hand anymore. Clerk's seen that and they're trying to get him on the ground. And now they are just going to Hulk smash this guy until he finally goes down. The little bit of news story that I have on this one says that there was an almost identical robbery the day before in a similar region. So he's in jail for both of those and they are just gonna beat him down pretty stinking solid and eventually they're going to end up stopping, hold him there until police arrive. Like I say, they end up taking him into custody. He's in jail for this robbery and for another one as well. And that's where this one ends. Boy, that turned into a WWE cage match in a hurry. If you want to get better with your self-defense, come join us at the ASP National Conference. I know I'm talking about it a lot, but we want to benefit the Flint Hills Foster Teen Camp and help you get better as a self-defender on the range, in the classroom, empty-handed skills. So please come join us. Hit the link in the description and get all the details and register. Cook did an awful lot of stuff right here, beginning with the fact that he doesn't tip his hand. You notice that he keeps his hand in his pocket. And I do recommend that in, when you carry OC spray. I know some people say that they're going to threaten somebody. Hey, get away from me or I will pepper spray you. I think that's a bad tactical decision. Bad idea. What you want to have is you want to have that OC spray in your hand. Remember, an OC spray is a long range eye poke and you do not want to tell the bad guy, hey man, if you're not careful, I'm going to poke you in the eye. Just the opposite. You want to hold that element of surprise as long as you can. And he did that here by keeping his hand in his pocket. Very, very good. Then when the OC spray comes out, again, no warning and he gets him right across the face. We jokingly say you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. You go east to west, north to south, or west to east, north to south to get across his eyebrow line, to get complete coverage of his nose in his mouth and, and all of his mucous membranes on his face. And don't warn. Again, just give him the hot sauce. When it's time to come out, it's time to use, and it is time also to maintain your distance. Remember, you're going to use OC spray like a long-range eye poke, like a 6, 8, 10-foot eye poke that you're able to get and maintain some distance. Notice here that the clerk is backing up, and that's the right thing to do. You don't want to OC spray somebody and then go hands-on with them. You might need to go hands-on with them, but you don't want to do that if you possibly can. The benefit of an OC spray is it diminishes the bad guy. It keeps him from being able to see you. A good one with a major capsaicinoid content over 0.5%. I prefer 1.3 to 1.4 and, and that's why I carry what I do. There's links in the description and all that stuff, friends. That, you know, you, that one will slam his eyes shut, get inside of his mucous membranes and start the misery. And then you want to keep your distance from him because you will get some secondary exposure if you have to go hands on with the guy. So we got him a couple of times there and then he got behind a barrier. I love that he got behind a closed door here, closed the door behind himself and got a barrier and got out of the danger zone. That's a principle that we really want to work through here. Get the heck out of the danger zone if at all possible. You don't want to stay in his vicinity. You don't pepper spray somebody and then stand around and watch him snivel. Instead, 
get the heck out of there and get on the phone with 911, get the cops there, recognize he probably won't be able to see you for a while, that you have diminished him, and that's a very, very good thing. Notice here what the spray does. Took a couple seconds, and that's what OC spray does. Takes a second or two, maybe even three or four, to get a good effect. Sometimes it's instantaneous, sometimes it takes a second or two, and a few people have a, uh, you know, a much less a reaction to it, but notice he cannot see anymore, so it has significantly diminished him. That's its value, in my opinion. Get him where he can't see you, where he's thinking about being in pain. Now, our good guy decides he's gonna come back in here and try to take the hammer away from the guy. If you choose to do that, the principles of the 5Ds plus one apply. You have to control the distance. You do not want your arms out there at complete lock at 180 degrees. You would much rather have them 90 degrees or in so that you have much more strength. And then you've got to practice once the distance is closed. You have to practice that deflect, keep it off you, then dominate. You've got to dominate the hand with the tool, the arm with the tool, the person with the tool. Then distract. You usually distract by causing pain and suffering to him or breaking things on him, disarm him, and then disable him. Because our good guy doesn't do a very good job of that. He doesn't really dominate. He's trying to hold onto the handle of the tool. Then he's going to punch him a few times, and so the guy gets his tool back and takes a swing at it. I don't know if that hurt the clerk too badly or if it just grazed down the side of him, but boy, do you not want to take a hit upside the head or in the arm or in the shoulder with that size of hammer. So I can't tell you enough. You're going to try to take a tool away from somebody. you got to practice the 5Ds plus one, and I'd recommend you do that on a regular basis on the mat so that you really have pressure tested it, you know how it works for you, and you've been able to do that. Now, we see that our bystander here is gonna come and get a longer range tool, and I think that's really wise. So he bonks him on the head with that there. Is he still a threat? Absolutely, he has been you know, lessened, he's been diminished by the OC spray, but he's not completely out of the fight. And so absolutely, use a longer range tool. Of course, if you know this guy, because he had a hammer on him and was threatening people with it, is that a deadly threat? Yes, but in Russia, very difficult to have a firearm in order to defend yourself. So having a longer range tool, like a chair, yeah, we joke that it's a WWE skit or whatever, but it did disarm him pretty well here, and therefore now they've got to get him into custody. Now, at some point, you gotta go, okay, what's the best thing for me to do here? As the other clerk comes out, here's where I really think that having some standing grappling skills, having the ability to take someone down and hold them down and get them in a posture where they cannot do you any uh, more harm is important. These guys didn't really have that, so what they resort to is just beating the tar out of this guy and hammer fisting him and hitting him in the kidneys to try to get him to comply on pain, but recognize the OC spray already has him in so much pain that he probably won't feel a whole lot more. They're just having to pound him to the ground. If instead you know how to upset someone's balance, get them on the ground, get them face down and get them in a compromised position where you can hold them there and that you learn that kind of stuff with arts like judo and jujitsu and stuff like that. Very, very wise to have because you don't want to just beat the tar out of the guy into the end of the earth because you're putting yourself at risk too. Overall, his clerk and the bystander did a fantastic job. They handled their business. This dude got the snivel spray. They covered their asp.